and welcome to my channel. My name is Alice and I am so sorry for the delay on this video. I really did mean to get it out on Friday, but things have just been so busy and I spent a lot longer on this art than I originally intended to, which I am really glad I did because I love how it came out. So I hope you guys do as well and I'm really excited for you to see the result. But that's one of the reasons this video is so late. So bear with me. I am got, I'm going to get one up once a week, like even if it's a little bit late so thank you for being so patient I really appreciate you all but um, today I am going to be doing my version of a historical painting so in school you know there was definitely times that I had to like recreate a historical painting um, repaint something study the masters all of that and that is awesome and it's really great practice and I actually really enjoy doing it and I also love historical art and I have this really awesome book that I got in San Diego called The Short Story of Women Artists by Susie Hodge and I decided to go through it, pick an image for inspiration and instead of redrawing it the way that I normally would have in school, I wanted to look at the image and then think how would I have drawn this in my style if I drew this today like with the same concept from my head but like in my style and my aesthetic so that was kind of the idea going into it so I flipped around um, and I was looking specifically I had some specific things in mind for what I wanted uh, for the art um, I did consider like both of these I considered uh, a lot of portraits um, just because they were going to give me the most flexibility and I like to draw portraiture but I ended up settling on this painting. So this painting is called Comtesse de la Chartre. I'm so sorry to anyone who speaks French. Um, and it's by Elizabeth Vigée Le Brun um, from 1789. So this is the image that I chose. I'm gonna talk more about all of this as I show you the art and let's go into the speed painting and you will see what my take on this painting looks like. While I work on the sketch, I'm going to read you a little bit more about the painting that I chose from the book. So again, this book is The Short Story of Women Artists by Susie Hodge. And this is about um, the Academy Royale. And so basically, the Academy Royale was in Paris and it was founded in 1648. And then it merged with the um, Music Academy and the Architecture Academy in 1795 and formed the Academy of Fine Arts. Um, and this academy, like, they rejected avant-garde styles. And I remember learning about this in school too with Impressionism, like they would allow the Impressionists in or anything like that. And they would choose who could exhibit in the annual salon. So they were super, super um, like traditional styled. And the first female me member was elected in 1663. And then only another 15 women were elected over the next 80 years. And then in 1706, women were banned completely. <clears throat> threatened but on seven in 1720 not on 1720 in 1720 um the artist rosalba carriera was asked to join the academy on the strength of a pastel portrait that she painted of the young prince and then 37 years later another woman became a member then in uh then only four years like for a while, it was like four women at a time were admitted um, to like keep the number in check. Um, so the artist that painted this painting originally, um, Elizabeth Vigée Le Brun, um, was like a really fashionable artist in Europe and was admitted to the Academy after the intervention of Marie Antoinette in 1783 um, on the same day as Adelaide Le Bille garden and two other female artists i am so sorry to all the languages that i am butchering i really do apologize i am trying my best um they were this is a direct quote many praised the women's achievements but others criticized them for brazenness and they were often derided in pamphlets go queens 
We love to see it. So yeah, so that's a little bit about um, like the the page that this was on. It was talking about the Academy Royale, and I thought that was really interesting. And I kind of wanted to like go off of a book instead of googling. I, like it just felt nice to have something in my hands and to see what the book had to say about it and stuff like that. So. Um, yeah, I was excited about that. And I do know this artist. Like, I have studied this artist in school and stuff like that, but not not intensely. I feel like we just saw some of her work, um, probably this one, and not a whole lot else. But then again, that was years ago, and I have the memory of a goldfish, so who knows. So now that I've talked a little bit about the history and my my thought like my idea for the video um, let's actually talk about the artwork because we've gotten pretty far in the span of a few minutes so I really liked what I liked about this portrait was um, the simplicity of it <clears throat> excuse me I like the simplicity of it I liked the like the composition, um, even though she's centered, there's kind of this like line of action, which I kind of didn't get, I didn't quite get as much. I really struggle and I have noticed this about myself and I've noticed this for a very long time. So if anyone else has this, let me know. Whenever I try to, try to draw something tilted, I always end up straightening it like instinctively and I do not know why or how or what but like it happens when I try to draw faces that are tilted when I try to draw bodies that are tilted like it's so weird um so anyway I liked the <laughs> like kind of it was like slightly centered but had an off-centered quality um and I felt like it was simple enough for me to play with because I really like to take more of a simple um like figure and combine it with fun colors and uh, a lot of times botanical motifs or celestial motifs. Those are things that I'm really into right now. I'm also really into kind of like pouring and layering. So I just, I wasn't exactly sure what direction I wanted to take this, but I decided to go instinctively. So as you saw, I started with the colored pencils to do the sketch. I used the tritones and I used like a really, really light yellow that I could barely see. And um, then I used a pink to do the actual like real sketch that I could see with my eyes without like squint. This was so light. I don't even... I feel like you could barely even see it on camera and I gave up on it really quickly. I was like, no, this is this is too much. Um, and then I went in with watercolor pencil to establish like a basic area and oh my gosh, I've done so much. <laughs> and I was just laying out watercolor pencil and then some of the inks. Right now I'm using more of the inks. I'm using the, all of the inks I'm using are by Dela Rowney. I use the Aquafine watercolor inks um, towards the start. And right now I'm using the FW inks, which are acrylic inks, liquid acrylic inks, and I'm using the pearlescent ones and then these fluorescent ones. And you can see, especially this pink is so neon. And I literally, I included this pink in that because I had finished the whole bottle. I included it in my 2021 favorite art supplies video that I just released. And I, I bought a new one and I've already gone through almost all of it. And to be fair, I was pouring it. I've been pouring a, like a bunch of pink things. There's going to be a new release in my shop soon. So keep an eye out for that. But um, yeah, so and then I used it on this and I'm, I'm, I need to go buy more. And I literally bought it like three weeks ago. So I maybe am obsessed. But yeah, so I built up this whole kind of base with watercolor, watercolor ink, acrylic ink, um, watercolor pencil. I think that's everything I use to build up this kind of like base it's underpainting underpainting that is the word I'm looking for which kind of establishes where some of the shadows are going to be some of the base colors um, get some texture in there and then I went in with something I really haven't used in a while in like this type of way which is colored pencil and this was really fun um, it was hard because I couldn't really see what I was doing um, that well because uh, you guys can see this closer than I can like this is if I could have seen this this closely wow that would have been great but um I couldn't <laughs> you know there was only so far I could lean in without my head getting in the shot and also I need glasses and I lost them so this is all slightly blurry everything slightly blurry and far away especially with the like face I was like what am I drawing but that said 
I used colored pencil for this, mostly Prismacolor because that's mostly what I have, but also some Faber-Castell, the Polychromos, also some, uh, I think there's Posca colored pencils and then like Holbein colored pencils, I don't even remember. And then I used the Tritone Blender colored pencil, the Tritone Blender one. Um, that was awesome. That helped so much, especially because this face was tiny. That's what I'm using right now. And um, the face is so tiny that like it's really hard to get those little details. And that little blender pencil really, really helps um, blend that in. And look, I made a mistake. And then she had a little smudge over her lip. And I was like, I had to try to fix it. Um, but with the face, I really just layered so much in so many little colors of pencil. And I wanted to um, really imitate in the face the way that it was painted in the actual like painting. I did adjust the colors. So I feel like I've, I'm all over the place in this video. I'm sorry. I'm recording this voiceover at 8.30 in the morning. I'm very tired. <laughs> um, but what was I talking about? This is what my streams are like. If you would like to come to my streams, they're like this. They're chaotic. Um, but I digress. The face, I wanted to make it look as close as possible in color sensitivity to the actual painting. Like I wanted to have this very like 17th century, not 17th century, 1700s vibe. Um, and I do feel like I got that. Like I had somebody come in, they were like, your painting, you look like your drawing looks like it's from the 1700s. And I was like, oh my gosh, this painting was in the 1700s. Um, but yeah, but with like neon colors. So I wanted to keep the spirit of the painting um, very much true in that sense. I originally was going to stylize the face more than I did. Um, I only ended up kind of stylizing it a little bit, but I also wasn't like directly trying to copy it. So it was kind of somewhere in the middle, but um, I am really happy with how the face turned out. Um, it was really nice to use these color pencils again and just be able to layer up all of that um, little bits of color. And it was just helpful for such a small area. I also went in with the colored pencils on the hair. Um, the hair in the in the actual picture was really nice and soft and I loved it. So I kept that same vibe but made it a little bit more wild and messy. Um, and then on the dress and this, oh, I love this part. Look how like the dress just comes to life when I add in the color pencils. It makes me so happy. Um, and then this is that blender pencil again, just blending everything out. And I did that across the whole dress. So I really, uh, I'm really just, I loved doing a really detailed colored pencil over the watercolor. It was, it was really nice. Oh, another thing that I meant, wanted to mention, but um, hadn't mentioned yet was I, you had seen me earlier adding some thicker white paint. That's actually watercolor ground. You can see it here on the folds of the uh, dress and watercolor ground is made for like painting on something and then you can put watercolor on top of it but I decided to try using it to add some physical texture to this um, because I was curious about what would happen and I think it looks cool so mission accomplished um, I also used after the colored pencil I layered up uh, some like acrylic ink so I'm constantly layering the colored pencil and then the ink the watercolor ink will kind of lay it'll hit the areas where the color pencil hasn't quite fully hit and then the acrylic ink will just lay on top of it so you can kind of use both um, and that's what I did and then I would put more color pencil on top and it worked really well as a layering technique so um, it's definitely a mixed media piece in very many <laughs> and I use so many different types of mediums like I lost track watercolor watercolor pencil colored pencil I use Posca's later acrylic ink watercolor ink metallic ink neon ink there's other stuff there's more stuff <laughs> um, but so in terms of the um style of the painting uh, I wanted to keep, like I said, like the skin, the face, um, the hands, the pose overall, very, very true to the original. And I just adjusted some of the colors there. So the ribbon, I brightened that blue. I still kept it a deep blue, but I really brightened it. The original was a very muted toned piece. And I wanted to really play with vibrant colors because that's something that I feel like 
I really love, especially in my style right now. And for quite some time now, I have been loving, loving, loving playing with bright colors. And especially the pink, blue, and purple is a color scheme that I use so often. So I felt like that was really reminiscent of my style. So that's what I chose to go with. Um, and I decided to make the couch. I wanted to keep it like dark, the sofa in the background. Um, but instead of a dark green, I went with like more of a blue, dark blue, purple, just to keep it more in the background because I do have this spearmint green um, that I think is really nice complement to the pink and the purple. But I wanted to keep that just for these leaves um, surrounding the flowers and then also the book because I changed the book cover and then also um, around like the hair hat area. Her hair was more of like a brown gray. I kind of pushed it to be more of a dark purple. Um, and then the hat also made a little bit more purple. And instead of all these ribbons that it had, I just kind of made it more of these loose abstract flowers to tie in the flowers at the front. Once I was done, pretty much done oh, with the figure, which took so long literally I streamed for six hours working on this um I finally got to move on to the foreground and I had the leaves um kind of set out and I wanted to use some poscas and add in some line work as well so I went in with this light green skinny posca and went around and added this kind of floating line work over the leaves and then I used more poscas to add an outline to the flowers to define them I'm going to kind of paint partially back over that outline later and then I used this white Posca that I got recently I am loving this one this one is a really nice size um, I don't remember off the top of my head but I will um, link it in the description below um, maybe it may not be there in the, if, within 24 hours of this video going up I will link it in the description below but I really like it and I used it to add in all these highlights and then I actually layered the acrylic ink over the top of that so it tints it um, it's a really fun technique and it adds some cool depth and it's just kind of an interesting way to layer so I like to do that a lot uh, I added real well not real gold but gold metallic ink to where the gold was painted in um, the original painting where it was like a sofa and um, I also added little gold detailing to the book and I kept trying to darken that background because I did want there to be a bit more contrast there as well. I uh, used some color pencil to uh, like sharpen some outlines and little details and things like that because I wanted to make sure that certain edges were crisp. You want in a painting some edges you want to be softer other edges you want to be crisper you don't want all your edges to be the same the edges are really important that sounds silly but it's very much true um, pay attention to edges if you look at a painting um, like by a master not by you know a shitty youtuber who's just recreating it and making it pink and blue and purple like um, please. Uh, I'm having a really good time, but like, I'm not here to compare myself to a master. I'm just stealing their ideas and making them pink, basically. Um, but anyway, uh, I definitely recommend, um, uh, looking at the edges in their artwork because you will notice that they vary between like soft and hard and soft and hard. And it, it really is, it's, it's something to keep in mind. But uh, yeah, I added some stars in the background because duh. Um, and then a couple final details. And then I was done with this, which this took a really long time. So I'm really happy with how it came out. But I hope that you guys like it as well. Um, this is my take on a historical painting. And I know that this voiceover was a little all over the place, but hopefully it was at least fun. <laughs> um, and if you liked this video, if you liked seeing um, what I worked on and what I did, I streamed for six hours, um, most of this painting over on Twitch on Friday, and I am there five days a week. So definitely stop by. Um, it's totally free. Um, it doesn't cost anything to sign up or watch my streams or anything like that. Um, it's just a good time and you don't have to chat if you don't feel comfortable. You can just lurkity lurk, but it is, it's a good time. So I will link that in the description box. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked this video. Let me know your favorite historical painting down in the description. Um, and let me know what you thought of this video. Um, 
yeah, that's all. I love you guys and I will see you in my next video. Thanks for watching and as always, have a great rest of your day. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.